All right, hello, and welcome to the next in the Effective Writing Center series of workshops after the EWC. Today's workshop is titled Six Basic Rules of Document Design in the Workplace and is being presented by Kevin Folliard and David Taylor. Kevin Folliard has been a writing advisor with the UMUC's Effective Writing Center since 2010. He has a degree in English and Creative Writing from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, and he has also published sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and young adult fiction. David Taylor is a senior advisor at the Effective Writing Center, where he has worked since 2004 as a database advisor and writing fellow. A Carnegie Fellow at the University of Mississippi, David received his doctoral degree in composition and rhetoric. To ask a question during the broadcast, please use the chat feature in YouTube below the viewing window. This workshop, like all of our workshops, will be archived for future viewing in the Effective Writing Center's Google Plus community. And now let's begin tonight's workshop. Thank you, Dan, and to everyone watching, thank you for joining us for this workshop on business document design. Our first message for you is as profound as it is straightforward. Because of the digital revolution and especially the World Wide Web, document design is a necessity in the professional workplace. Today, you don't just write a business document, you must also design it. Let's consider these document design basics. First, margins. The standard today in business documents is one inch margins on all sides. To ensure your margins are set to this specification, first click on the layout tab in the top nav bar. Then click on the drop down arrow under margins. The first setting you should see is normal, which will place a one inch margin on all sides of the document, top, bottom, left, and right. A second consideration is pagination, which consists of page numbers and any identifying text or graphics for the document. Pagination information is normally placed in the header or footer areas of the document. These areas are usually accessed by double clicking in the one inch margin area at the top for the header and at the bottom for the footer. In academic documents, style guides such as APA and MLA provide specific guidelines for pagination. However, in business documents, writers enjoy more freedom in how the necessary information will appear. In Microsoft Word, you can access, access different styles by clicking on Insert, then on the drop-down arrow for page number. In addition to page numbers, you'll see options for accent bars and bold facing. Same for the header drop-down arrow, where you'll see more design variations. If pagination information is to go at the bottom or at the foot of the page, click on Insert, then on the footer drop-down arrow. Here you'll also be given design options. After inserting a header, footer, or page number, you'll also see options under the Design tab that will allow you to further customize your pagination. For example, some styles prefer that a page number not appear on the first page of the document. Or if the document is to be bound in some form, it's customary to place different information on odd or even pages. Keep in mind that companies often have their own design for the header and footer areas that you must follow. Some of these designs may include company logos or other graphics. I'm going to turn it over to David now for some more design basics. OK, uh, thank you very much, Kevin. We're looking at some of those other designs right now. And let's talk about knowing your fonts. You know, there are thousands of different fonts out there, but they all fall into two main categories, serif and sans serif. A serif is any small line or shape attached to a letter. Popular serif fonts include Times New Roman, German, Palatino. The opposite of serif is sans serif, which means without serif. Common examples are Gothic, Arial, Gil Sans, and Calibri. Sans serif fonts have smooth letters that lack the chiseled look and decorations of serif fonts. 
Next principle, combine those fonts. To give the parts of your document more visual distinction, it's recommended that you combine a serif font with a sans serif font. Studies have shown that large blocks of text are easier to read in a serif font. That's why virtually all books, magazines, and long documents use a serif font for body copy. That leaves sans serif fonts or smooth fonts for display copy, such as titles, subtitles, and headings. Let's apply this principle about fonts to a common type of business document, the executive summary. First, we're going to choose a serif font and a sans serif font to use throughout the document. You know, it's often said that different fonts express different moods. Well, to avoid having too many moods in your document, limit the number of fonts to two. But if there are elements like sidebars, pull quotes, and so forth, you can use a third font for them. Today, one of the most frequently used serif fonts is Times New Roman. But don't hesitate to use a serif font you think is more appropriate for your audience and document. For this demonstration, let's change the body copy to Times New Roman with a point size of 12. That is also very common. Now we must decide on a sans serif font for the title and subtitles. Because of the dominance of word, Calibri is the most commonly used sans serif font today. But again, don't hesitate to choose a different one that you think is more appropriate. Now, after changing the title and subtitles to Calibri, the design rule about size is this. There must be at least a two-point size difference between elements for their difference to be noticeable to the reader. So, if our body copy is 12-point, then our subtitle, the next level up, must be 14 points. And then the main title, the one above that, must be 16 points. So our document would now look something like this. To gain further visual distinction between the parts, we can also apply bold facing. And of course, we will want to center the main title. Well, it's good. We might want to increase that main title to 20 points to really command attention as a main title. There you go. Okay, Kevin will now tell us about the so-called invisible design element. Kevin? Thank you, David. One other design element to notice is white space. The white space between elements of equal weight must also be equal. In this case, we're using block paragraphing, no indentations, which is the most common type of paragraphing on the web and in business documents. Therefore, we have a single blank line separating each section throughout the document. No more, no less. Now we have a document with a title that dominates the page, sections clearly defined by white space and subheadings, and an attractive blend of serif and sans serif fonts. However, there's still more to do. Another key principle of contemporary document design is to prefer lists over paragraphs. There are two types of lists, an unordered list, often called a bullet list, and an ordered list, one that is sequenced by numbers or letters. The principle of prefer lists over paragraphs can be applied to the purpose section of this executive summary, which is one long sentence with a series of two phrases. Let's put a colon after two and make a list. Now, we highlight the elements of the list and apply formatting for a bullet list because these items do not represent a sequence that must be numbered. We click on the bullet drop-down menu of the home ribbon. We can choose one of the available bullet types or define a new type. The new bullet can either be a symbol, such as this diamond, or a picture. Just type in what you want in the search bar and it will be added automatically. Let's use the typical bullet for this list. Now notice how using a list helps to break up the blocky look of the page. We can do the same with the list of recommendations at the end of the document. However, notice that these recommendations are steps that must be taken in a sequence. So we have to use an ordered list. 
Again, we highlight the list, but this time we click on the ordered list options and choose appropriately. Our short executive summary looks more professional now. Excellent. David, what do you have for us next? Well, basically boxes and images, Kevin. You see, when creating a document such as a long report, you may want to consider some additional elements that can break up the page and help you achieve a more professional look. These elements are images, sidebars, boxes, and pull quotes. Since this executive summary is about the Chatham County Police Department, a logo would be helpful. Now, to insert any image or icon into a Word document, click on the Insert tab and then select Pictures. Navigate to the image on your desktop and click Insert. Now, you may need to crop the image if necessary. Please do so. Now, to position that image next to the relevant text, right-click on it. Select Wrap Text, then Tight. Now, watch what happens. You can drag that image to the text it's associated with, in this case, the first mention of the Chatham County Police Department. To control how far or near the text is from the image, right-click on the image again. Select Size and Position in the dialog box, and then text wrapping. Now, simply adjust the numbers accordingly. Right-clicking on the image will also bring up the format picture option, which gives you a lot of other effects to choose from. Now, sidebars. A sidebar is a box that breaks up the page with additional information that's not found in the main body. Sidebars can be added as either a shape or a text box. It is totally your choice. First, just activate your cursor, then go up to the Insert tab and select Shapes. Then, select the square box and your cursor turns into crosshairs. Now, draw the approximate box size you need and just insert your text into it and align it. Now, a sidebar is one place you can add a third font style. Since we're stuffing a lot of text into a small space, let's choose a font like, say, oh, Gothic Demi Compressed. Now we're going to adjust the box accordingly. Now, also keep in mind that sidebars often have a background color. To add a color, just select the box. Then at the top toolbar, click on Format. And then in Shape Fill. Select a background color that makes the box stand out, yet keeps the text readable. But then do the same thing for the border color and the border size. Both of those help make the sidebar stand out. Now let's wrap the body text around the box. Right-click on it, go down to Wrap Text, and then Tight. Now watch what happens. As you move that box, the box the text wraps accordingly around it. Okay, Kevin, what else can we do with boxes? Well, David, shapes or text boxes can also be used to insert a pull quote. A pull quote is an important quotation repeated from the body copy to emphasize its importance. A pull quote uses enlarged point size and often bold facing to achieve its effect. In our executive summary, perhaps the key finding is that dispatchers do not view supervisor feedback to be helpful. To emphasize this important finding for our executive, we could use a pull quote. First, draw a text box. To do this, click on Insert. Go to the text grouping and click on the drop-down arrow next to text box. Look at the bottom of the dialog box and click on Draw Text Box. The cursor turns into a crosshair. Now draw the text box and insert the quote. Next, change the font to sans serif. Enlarge the text, align it as you wish. You can adjust the size of the text box to achieve the effect that you wish. Next, right click on a side of the box and choose wrap text, then tight. Looks good. Now let's remove the border of the text box. Click in the text box, click on Format in the top toolbar, then click on the drop-down arrow next to Shape Outline, 
and select no outline. Finally, by leaving its borders on, a text box can be used to emphasize key parts of body copy. For example, if we wanted to add a special note to the end of the methods and results section, we would first make space for our box by using the enter key. Then we draw a text box below the methods and results section. We paste in the text and adjust the box accordingly. Since this is a special note, we may wish to boldface the word note or even add a background color. As always, when using these design elements, consider your audience. Study similar documents that have been submitted to this audience to help determine what this audience expects. Remember, ultimately, it's the audience that rules. OK, thank you very much for joining us for this document design workshop. Back to you, Dan. All right, thank you, Kevin, and thank you, David. Uh, looks like we do not have any questions at the moment, but I will let all of our viewers know that you can post a question about this workshop or any of our workshops in our Google Plus community, or you can reach out to the Effective Writing Center at writingcenter at umuc.edu. Writing Center is one word. We will be back in December with our next workshop, and we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you all.